My name is Madhav Bissa, and I'm your host for today's session. I hope everyone is staying safe and keeping their spirits high. So before we start the session, I request all the participants to keep their microphones on mute and switch off their videos. Also, please type your questions in the chat box and we will respond to those during the Q&A session. Thank you. So now on to the topic. So as we all are aware that AI today is transforming the way the business are conducted globally. More and more organizations, including governments, are adopting AI to increase efficiency and output. However, AI has far more applications than operational ones. It has emerged as a strategic imperative. Hence today's topic, AI for competitive advantage and strategic differentiation. And who better to discuss about this than Mr. Samir Dhanrajani, the Chief Executive Officer of AI Curate, a bespoke global advisory, AI advisory and consulting firm. Now in this session, Samir will provide meaningful insights on making your organization AI enabled for gaining competitive advantage and strategic differentiation. This bespoke and experiential masterclass session will compel will compel you to cogitate towards developing AI strategies and action plans for leveraging AI capabilities within your organizations and business functions. And it will help you to inculcate transformation, innovation, and disruption dynamics within your organizations. Samir will also sh showcase topical scenarios, best practices, and global trends in AI arena. So, now, Samir is a fast tracker professional with 20 plus years of different genres of industry experience. He has donned various leadership roles in consulting, GCCs, Bellwether technology organizations, and boutique firms to help deliver transformative and innovative AI advisory offerings to several CXOs and senior leaders. He is a globally recognized AI advisor, business builder, evangelist, and thought leader known for his deep knowledge, strategic consulting approaches in the AI arena. Samir has consulted with several Fortune 500 global enterprises, Indian corporations, GCCs, startups, SMBs, VCP firms, academic institutions in driving AI-led strategic transformation and innovation strategies. Samir is also a renowned author columnist, blogger, and four-time TEDx speaker. He's an author of best-selling book, AI and Analytics, Accelerating Business Decisions. And this book has been published by Wiley and series, uh, series editor for Wiley Innovation, Black Book 2019 and 2020 edition. So he writes regularly for Forbes, Your Story, Telangana Today, and Business World. Is a pro prolific blogger with trend setting, topical coverage on AI strategy and consulting spectrum. Samir is also associated as an AI advisor on policy matters with leading business associations, industry consortia, and state governments. And he is instrumental in leading the effort for positioning India as a premier destination in AI. He is a trusted advisor with leading academic institutions active with startups and SMBs and advises them on AI-led interventions. Samir, it is fantastic to have you with us today in this session. Just to let you know that we have had an overwhelming response to this masterclass session. So without any further ado, let me open the stage for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Samir Dhanrajani. Thanks, Madhav. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks, Madha, for the introduction and thanks, Supriya, for facilitating this session. And thanks, NASCOM, for giving me an opportunity to uh, kind of do a session uh, with a wider audience. Uh, I think, yes, uh, and I, I just hope everyone is staying safe and uh, taking uh, due precautions. Uh, this is a testing time. And uh, nothing better than uh, talking about something which uh, today stands at the forefront of uh, uh, what I used to say a few months back before COVID, uh, innovation, transformation, disruption. Now I have added two more uh, 
uh, set of uh, a narrative post that which is AI now today also is standing for survival and revival once we are in the post recovery phase. And as the topic suggests, uh, artificial intelligence is the most talked about business lexicon in the CXO's uh, world today and strategically in the boardroom as well. Having said that, for any business today, any venture, any output, any startup, the significance of artificial intelligence remains very, very upfront because it's not only, I would say, uh, a set of technology, it's a part of the business, it's a part of operating model, and it's a part of strategy today. And any organization, any, any enterprise which is trying to leverage artificial intelligence today, they are not only trying to do that for adoption, they're also trying to leverage AI for competitive advantage and strategic differentiation. And that's the talk I will have. Uh, so we'll spend uh, close about 45 minutes in terms of a presentation and uh, uh, please stay put because the presentation has a lot of examples, a lot of case studies, a lot of, I would say, industry use cases, many of them. I have personally dealt with in the previous set of organizations I have worked and uh, interacted with the client on that scenario. Without naming the client, I will share in terms of the scenarios, the problems, and also kind of give a view in terms of the end impact uh, to the organization. I want to start with a narrative. Now, this is a real story and a story which is in the public domain and a story which is often uh, true uh, I've often heard questions around that AI is for the classes, it's not for the masses, it's expensive, it's too complex, and people don't figure out what is this entire set of uh, tool, technology, practice, or business. This is a story about a gentleman called Makato Koyake. Makato is the gentleman, the boy who's standing at the back uh, in the picture. Uh, with his parents. Makato finished his engineering and Makato is based out of Japan. Uh, he finished his engineering in Japan. This is a picture when it was shot. It's a picture when he came back after finishing his engineering. He met his parents. His parents uh, are farmers. Farmers in Japan are still considered to be a very revered kind of let's say, occupation. Uh, it's a very extreme, uh, rather it's a very kind of a sought after occupation till today. And Makato parents were very happy to meet, uh, rather, uh, yeah, Makato. So during the conversation, uh, Makato's mother told him that, uh, look, uh, uh, they've been growing cucumbers for last uh, almost 10, 12 years. And uh, over the last couple of years, their income from cucumbers is going down. Now, just to give a kind of, let's say, more narrative, uh, cucumber farming in Japan is a very... Uh, kind of a sought after variety. There are eight varieties of cucumber, shape, texture, color, and different kind of variables. And every week there is an auction in Japan where cucumbers are sold. Now, as uh, Makato uh, was hearing, he was trying to understand what caused the income to dip because it was all fine when he started his engineering. And when his mother said that the income has not been able to catch up, he started thinking. He went back to his home uh, then he realized, look, he has studied some bit of AI in his engineering days, and maybe this is the time to start uh, some kind of putting some knowledge to the usage. So he went back to the farm, clicked about uh, 4,000 odd pictures through his iPhone of uh, cucumbers from various dimensions, various uh, kind of, let's say, angles, and he came back. Uh, through his uh, laptop, he downloaded a kind of a Google uh, TensorFlow tool, a freely downloadable kind of a tool. And he also bought a Raspberry Pi 3 controller, a $35 uh, kind of a, let's say, microcontroller from Amazon. And then he started labeling and annotating the pictures through the deep learning technique on uh, Google TensorFlow. And this is where then he realized that, look, he can make an algorithm in terms of correlating uh, what his parents are growing as part of the cucumbers in terms of variety and extrapolating that with the yield which is coming from the auctions uh, every week. So when he tried doing this model through Google TensorFlow, he first arrived at about 30%, uh, 40% accuracy. He tried further, he went 
and started doing kind of iterations and experimentation till the time he reached to a level of almost about 80 percent now he said look this is a kind of a let's say a thing what he was looking at he went back to his parents told them what kind of a variety of cucumber they should be growing 18 months down the line his parents income went up by 400 percent the cost associated was just 35 dollars this is what when we say magic happens in terms of ai being used for the masses this is where the whole what we say this uh, rubber hits the road and this is where the whole aspect of ai comes to the relevance and i'll talk about many more examples in terms of how it's being used by the organization for advantage in terms of taking a kind of a strategic approach and what differentiation in terms of the key elements ai is doing as part of competitive advantage now the fact over there as we all know today data is inherently dumb i mean we can capture we can kind of aggregate any source any kind of a quantum of data unless it's hardness unless it's massage unless the algorithms are being put in place and deployed and implemented it will carry no usage and algorithms usually have no value unless they are kind of defining intelligence insights and recommendations and that's exactly what companies today executives are looking in terms of taking decisions based the algorithms now the set of companies what you see today are no brainers uh, for many of you these are digital asset like new age companies but the fact over there to me these are nothing but math houses netflix uber google facebook there are ip able patented algorithms which are running under the hood and doing the magic for these companies and that has become a secret sauce for these organizations and many more but as we say it's not only restricted to new age companies or what we call it digitally uh, advanced companies i mean if you look at this particular slide it's just a representation the extension of artificial intelligence across industry is pervasive it's everywhere every aspect of i would say a value chain is getting disrupted through artificial intelligence and what we are also saying today that large complex unresolved business challenges are being solved with artificial intelligence today and this is my own uh, i would say uh, assumption as i see how the evolution of uh, artificial intelligence will happen eventually there will be an emergence of algorithm economy now look uh, in our usual um, corporate uh, aspect we are kind of getting a lot of business challenges today growth top line bottom line cost supply chain problem marketing sales now think of this you are besieged with these problems every day and you don't know what needs to be done because the decision making is all something by basis of the past actions what we have taken there is a virtual exchange a marketplace where you kind of log in i mean you go to this marketplace which is virtual and you see millions of algorithms by category marketing finance hr supply chain uh, r and d quality different set of algorithm solving different set of problems of the corporates if you have a particular problem you go and particular pick up that particular category you look at that algorithm do a poc do a quick check do a kind of an experimentation if you like it you buy it buy it and implement in your organization that is the level of sophistication we are talking about in the time to come where algorithms will become the mainstay for the organization to remain relevant and to become more i would say competitive in the time to come and that's where i mean if it's 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 often said today and it's true today that uh, we are talking about algorithms sitting in the board rooms along with the board members taking decisions on behalf of the board or along with the board for the betterment of the corporate or that particular enterprise and it's happening a couple of organizations in hong kong and us have actually made algorithms the board members as part of taking decisions so th that's the extent of what we say sophistication which is happening through algorithms occupying that vantage position now outside of this whole aspect of being positive with ai there is always a flip side we say and uh, a lot of that discussions have happened uh, over the years in terms of algorithms becoming uh, rogue uh, biasness i mean these mill mill practices because of algorithm 
yes, there are those instances which has caused tremendous challenges or problems for the corporates. But that's a different side altogether. We'll talk about that in a, maybe a different, uh, I would say, dimension. But yes, if, if algorithms go wrong, as you can see as part of this particular uh, example, I mean, the price of the book because of the algorithm going wrong has shot up to almost $18 million. And everyone is aware today how fake news is being generated by multiple AI interventions to create panic. Now, beyond all these, I would say, set of issues and challenges, which to me are more of manual interventions led uh, challenges, I think there are humongous areas where AI is proving out to be what I say a secret sauce for the organizations. And let me explain why it's happening. And I'll give some facts and figures in terms of one, the relevance of AI. As we speak last year alone, 45 to almost $58 billion of money has been sent, I mean, spent in AI alone in terms of MA, research, investments, and all. What we are talking about is a new creation of a market altogether. Analytics I mean, data science is altogether a different market. And now today with the sophistication of image, voice, text, mm. and video analytics, which is AI, we're talking about a very new market altogether, which at a minimum will be $100 billion by 2025. And if we put the RPA segment put together, we're talking about a new segment of $150 billion getting created in the next few years. So that's something which is I mean, humongous when we talk about in terms of the scale and the revenues. Now, if you look at different studies, uh, analyst reports, one fact over there is that if you look on the right side, uh, right hand side of this slide, the adoption of AI amongst the top Fortune 1000 companies is huge. We are talking about 75% of top 200 plus C-suite executives saying AI will be implemented. Now, now, there could be some delays, there could be some latency because of the COVID situation, but the fact over there is when recovery happens, everything comes back to normal in terms of what initially the investments have been done will start kind of proving out to be more incremental in the time to come. Now, if, if you look at other aspect, which has always been a question about what we say the impact, various analyst reports have also projected a very healthy impact in terms of the top line uh, cost containment or efficiency increase by leveraging AI. And that's something which for a lot of skeptics where AI is always being cautioned in terms of creating a bang for the buck or return on investment. I think the reports out here are something which usually is validated in terms of saying, look, there is a definite impact in terms of how the dollars can be saved or augmented in terms of leveraging AI. And one aspect which uh, has been collated from multiple reports, which is revealing, if you again look at the right side of this slide, for the legards, for the organizations which are not able to push the agenda of AI on a proactive basis, $1.2 trillion worth of business will be stolen from competitors by companies using AI next year. That's the kind of quantum of money we are talking about for the legards who will not be able to catch up in AI as a part of their strategy, as part of their implementation. Now the fact over there beyond all these facts and numbers is why are we so gungo? Why are we so kind of buoyant about AI? Well, the fact is if you look at various reports and various kind of let's say instances today, the sum total of machine performance is outscoring or outpacing human performance. Many of you would have heard about AlphaGo Zero. AlphaGo Zero is created by uh, Google DeepMind. Now, this is a machine which actually uh, competes on the chess game with the best of the grandmaster. Now, just to give a computing power, the rather the enormous computing power, computing power of AlphaGo Zero. I'll give an example out here. Our own with Grandmaster Vishwanath Anand, when he plays a game of chess, he can think almost 400 times before in terms of permutation and combination, in terms of what the opponent may kind of do as part of the next move, 400 times in terms of permutation and combination. AlphaGo Zero can actually think 370 million times in terms of different permutation and combinations of a chess move before the opponent's 
start doing anything. That's the differentiation we are talking about in terms of fast, high velocity computing power and bunch of algorithms playing the trick over there. We've all seen how Alexa's performance has improved from the time conversational AI became mainstream. And there are numerous examples in terms of healthcare, in terms of image and the video examples in terms of how those techniques are giving now much more better accuracy because of advancements of what is happening in the AI world. And I'll talk about that in much more details with relevant examples. Now, think of this. In the eventual aspect, while we're talking about AI will trigger competitive advantage and become differentiation in, in terms of influencing decision-making, there is a theory and a kind of analysis behind that. As human beings, let me take a very provocative statement. We are predictably irrational. There is a book by Danny Reilly, Predictably Irrational, if you've read. Now, per the book and per the studies uh, by various neuroscientists, it's been often said, an average human being takes about 60 odd decisions on a given day. What is that I have to do today evening? What's my plan after the lockdown is over? What's my plan in 2021? These are some of the strategic, operational, tactical decisions we are taking on a daily basis, right? Now think of this, majority of these decisions, majority of them are being taken by our gut, intuition, as it has happened in the past, it will be happening like this, or influenced by our friends, colleagues, and spouses. Now think of this, will algorithms coming in, the decision-making is getting challenged. The way we transact today on Paytm, the way we consume news, by in shots, the way we kind of, let's say, do our shopping on Amazon and Flipkart. It's all influenced because adjacent categories, discounting, the way we are kind of, let's say, doing our browsing history is all determining algorithms to tweak and create a personalization engine just for you. And this exactly in a larger basis for organizations will compel decision makings to happen through AI because the advancements in image, voice, text, and video will far more exceed the human performance. And let me give an example now when we're talking about, but before that, when we talk about what are the strategic imperatives, what the organizations to, should be doing to kind of take in competitive advantage by AI, there are three dimensions. One, the fact over there today is that every organization, B2B, b to see startup deep tech or let's say conglomerate or a standalone enterprise is talking about how does one reimagine the customer experiences. Customers never had that better kind of an offering or a better kind of a treatment before. We are all pampered today as we know. I mean personalized, hyper segment, hyper targeting is the name of the game, which is compelling organizations to create innovative product and services. There is no choice today but to innovate. And as a result in what's happening, companies today have no option but to transform their value chain, essentially their businesses. I give an example, few years back, when we used to apply for a credit card, let's say an ICSA or HDFC credit card, there used to be a 16 step process from the time you contact a customer support executive from the time you land up a credit card and the turnaround time used to be 28 days. Same process today. Because of the advent of chatbots, AI, same process is being done in just three steps with a turnaround time of five days. So the efficiency, the whole accuracy, the whole speed of the business has really improved. And that's what the transformation, innovation and disruption in the business is all about. Now, let me give an example why we are talking about this whole differentiation through AI or creating a competitive advantage. I'll give you some example in terms of what companies are doing. So the gentleman on the left side, everyone know Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, but the story is not about that. Today, every listed company have an earnings call every quarter. A CEO has to stand up, deliver, the earnings potential, the potential of the company, the earning details, the financials. And I'm sure you haven't witnessed a CEO who's been kind of a negative or pessimist or kind of not bullish about the company. At least I've not seen that. But the fact is behind every organization, there is a tremendous 
set of money at stake. P, hedge funds, VC firms, kind of analysts, shareholders, they've all plonked their money into that organization. So they cannot just go by the narrative or the commentary of the CEO because that would be just one instance of he or she saying things are fine and tomorrow the stock price may crash because the projections or the earnings may not match. So what AI professionals are trying to do it as part of any analyst call or let's say uh, uh, kind of earning uh, calls, when the CEO stands, her entire voice and facial expressions are being analyzed. Any kind of a voice modulation, lump in the throat, could be considered a sign of the weakness. Any facial expression which is not in sync with the narrative could be a sign of the weakness. But the fact over there is that, look, the CEOs are smart. They're well tutored and rehearsed for the earnings call. Now they may fake in terms of their emotions, and AI professionals are a much more smarter bunch. So what they're trying to do is, in any earnings call, if you have noticed uh, any videos or any kind of, let's say, live coverage, there are a bunch of CXOs sitting behind the CEO, a chief compliance officer, a chief legal officer, a marketing head, or a kind of, let's say, finance head for sure. Now, the CEO, think of this, is very bullish, talking about the numbers, and she's talking about the company doing fantastic growth in the year. But the CFO at the back at the same time is maintaining a straight poker faced expression. You do that correlation with image video kind of going live on a real time basis, you could see that a sign of a weakness. So that's one data point where we say how data from the non obvious sources is now getting aggregated at a high velocity to make decisions. The right hand examples quickly is about uh, uh, satellite imagery of uh, retail mall in US, not a big deal kind of a thing. This is something which everyone do, does that to measure the footfalls, right? No, this satellite imagery data on a real time basis for this retail store is not trying to gauge the footfall. This data is trying to kind of ascertain the number of cars parked in the parking lot, the make of the cars, the model of the car, the time the car is parked in the parking lot and trying to extrapolate these data points with the projected fun, financial projection of that particular company for the next three to six months. That's the kind of, let's say, non-office data sources they're collecting to ensure that decision making is much more robust. Let's hear this video clip. So this is almost like a 10, 15 second uh, video feed uh, of a Super Bowl match in US uh, for the connoisseurs of Super Bowl uh, or US soccer. Uh, you, you've seen that it's a, it's a very high stake game, close to about $160 billion of ad spend happens in one single match. One TV commercial cost close to about almost three to $4 million. So that's the kind of money for marketeers at that stake. And imagine your company, your brand uh, has put in money over there and your CEO uh, did not see the ad throughout the match and uh, your team also lost. And as it happens in corporate lives, the next day you are trying to avoid the CEO and the life is always tricky. The moment you try to avoid something, it happens, you meet the CEO in the hallway and the first question she asks, where the hell was our brand? We did not see, but you were smart. You were using artificial intelligence through this kind of a technique, which you can see in this video feed. Now look at the right side, please. <clears throat>
So as you could see, through a labeling and annotating of the images in the live feed of the match, the jersey of the players, the turf of the stadium, the aisle gallery of the players, everything was labeled and annotated. So the brands as and when they were flashing in the video feed were actually getting displayed by a simple marketing mix attribution on the right hand side. And this is where the power of AI comes into the picture in terms of giving that competitive advantage, differentiation, and more importantly, the ROI and the bang for the buck. So this is where things starts happening in terms of how AI is proving out to be a secret sauce. Let me give you more aspects about transforming the business through AI, more about how innovative product and services, but more importantly, I mean, as I move on to this example, uh, while taking very different aspects of examples, uh, marketing, this is an example about HR. Now, many of you will wonder, hey, why HR in this picture you can't correlate? Well, yes. So this is a picture or a video picture of a e-commerce store in China. Uh, 2,200 workers work in this large warehouse at any given point of time. It's a 24 by seven warehouse and uh, millions of transactions happen on a daily basis. Now you will say, yeah, it's a picture of a CCTV image of uh, looking at if there are any trespassing, security mugging or any kind of security issues. Well, yes, but what's happening? HR managers are looking at this video feed on a real time basis. So as it happens in a warehouse where millions of transactions happen daily, the fatigue is very high. Workers sometimes lose interest because it's, it's a very trivial job and there is a lot of stress and anxiety. So looking at the pictures of the employees, looking at the data and the labeling and annotating, they're able to kind of analyze at what point of time the fatigues on the faces of the employees goes up. When it's optimal, they just pause the production, go on the floor, give a pat on the back spot awards and come back. Now think of us, many of us have been accustomed to having pat on the back or spot awards when the CEO is in town or there is a town hall. So it's ad hoc -ish. Now This is a live example where HR managers are making decisions just to ensure that the productivity is enhanced by capturing real time kind of a data. Now, one sector I'm very bullish about which will change dramatically is healthcare as we have seen an example how today a lot of tools, applications uh, through AI are being projected to help tackle the COVID problem. And NASCOM per se is also have initiated a lot of, I would say, interventions around that. But if you look at today, I mean, things around chest, when we talk about this COVID, the whole virus enters through the chest. Now the thing over chest is that there are 15 symptoms in the chest which can make you go wrong. MRI, CT scan, X-ray, radiologist takes about 15 to 20 minutes just to analyze what's wrong in your chest. Deep learning algorithm, millions of X-ray, CT scans, images, previously kind of, let's say, linked, can give that same result, much more better accuracy, much, much, much faster in few milliseconds. Now that's the level of sophistication we are talking about, but, but at the same time, you will have a thought that look, radiologists, which is considered to be a very sought after profession in India or even across the world, what will happen to that? Just hold your thoughts, I'll come to that. Now, this is again an example, just like Makato, which is what I say, when AI works for humanity, the magic happens. This is again a real time example or other real life example uh, in the public domain. The story is about a gentleman who's not in the center of the picture, but who's actually on the right side of the picture. The, the guy who's wearing glasses. Now, the story is about Saqib Sheikh. Saqib Sheikh is born and bred up in Pakistan. He moved to US about 14, 15 years back. And Saqib is visually impaired. He cannot see from his birth. Saqib moved to US, got a job with Microsoft. And uh, in the first few months of Microsoft, he made friends. and. Uh, in one of his uh, usual lunch discussion, his friend said, Saqib, let's make your life magical. And Saqib said, look, guys, stop joking. I can't see there's nothing magical for me. They said, okay, 
just wait for some time. After a few months, they gave Saqib a pair of glasses. Now these are not ordinary pair of glasses. The glasses have innate ability to click pictures. Now you will say pictures and Saqib. What is the correlation? Because Saqib cannot see. Now as Saqib steps out to meet his friends, go to the office or go to the neighborhood to buy the grocery, he wears these glasses. So the glasses have innate ability, as I said, to click pictures. He can press uh, the stem of the glasses multiple times and the picture will start kind of, let's say, getting clicked. Now the pictures on a real time basis are actually getting translated into voice and he can hear through the hearing aids what he usually listens with that socket. 10 meters ahead of you, there is probably a 15 year old kid wearing a beige trousers, blue jersey, and white shoes or rather black shoes and on a skateboard would you like to meet him imagine image voice text and video coming together for Sakib to make his life magical this is what we're talking about how ai can actually work in a much more larger and significant proportion for humanity now as i say that uh, while you were holding your thoughts for radiologists in terms of what will happen to the profession i have another example 7,000 deaths happen in US every year because of wrong prescription of drugs. With all due regards, doctor writing, doctor's writing is very illegible. I can't make what usually doctors write. That's the same scenario across the globe. Wrong prescription of drugs and medicine, 7,000 deaths in US, $14 billion of lawsuits get filed. One of the pharmacy company, chemist, as we call it, said enough is enough. So this ph pharmacy company, a large company in the US, they devised a robotic arm, which they deployed in the California Union Square store. So this robotic arm greets you at the front end of the store. As you walk in, you give the prescription to her. She will go through the aisle of the store, store picks up, scans the um, uh, kind of, let's say, prescription. And you know, in US, the US data, I mean, the data records of the patients are linked. So it will match with the previous kind of symptoms, goes through the aisle of the store, picks up the medicine, comes to your uh, kind of, let's say at the front end in 45 seconds, you can walk out after paying through a contactless credit card in almost like 75 to one and a half minutes. Accuracy rate 99.9%. .9%. In this case, you will question again, what is the job of a pharmacist? Well, the fact is, a radiologist and pharmacists are not meant to just prescribe medicines or just to analyze the x-ray. The core job for radiologists is to counsel the well-being of the patient. And so is the job of a pharmacist. Somewhere in the trivial aspects, all the kind of, let's say, main core jobs are getting lost. And that will get more enhanced and amplified through artificial intelligence, where the trivial jobs will be taken over by the machines. Now, this is again, I'll flip through the slide. I mean, large fatalities can happen if uh, the train usually, uh, high-speed train, uh, the doors don't shut or doesn't open kind of a thing. And a few months back, I'm sure you would have read a news in Japan, a uh, bullets uh, train at 250 kilometers per hour speed. Doors were left open for four minutes because they malfunctioned. Imagine, God forbid, nothing happened over there, but fatalities could have been high. Sensors across the train, different devices, different instruments, different machines. The data is being fed live to the OEMs, manufacturers, and the suppliers to kind of give them a preemptive notice what can go wrong so that they can service and do a kind of a maintenance much before the time. Now, as we say, automation 100% of full is bad. Well, you may say, yeah, no, it's not bad. Even Elon Musk, who's been a proponent of automation, has been saying, oh, I'm fine with doing automation until he tweeted this thing. And we know that he runs his organization through tweets. This is what he said. Excessive automation at Tesla was a mistake. To be precise, my mistake, humans are underrated. And this is where it's happened, where automation is leading nothing but rebalancing of human and machine equations. The jobs will be getting realigned, reskilled, upskilled kind of a thing, and machines will work in tandem with the humans as part of artificial intelligence revolution. But the fact over there is that while we can have competitive advantage or differentiation through AI, 
well, how do you ensure that you can make the best of the algorithms you can make the best of i would say models but how do you ensure there is a mass adoption because algorithms cannot drive the market behavior so there is a theory over there that for that today ai is not alone and i'm making a statement a bit more provocative artificial intelligence is not alone it's a summation of data engineering ai and behavioral science and behavioral science theory i mean kind of let's say aspect has gained much more significance in today's time by this example and some of the examples i'll give that why we are talking about significance of understanding the human behavior which is how do you design for the subconscious mind now this is an example of a visual dashboard of oral b which has a iot or a sensor not a big deal many of the devices have a sensor and idle brushing time is 2 minutes today for many of us who have kids we realize today when they go have they have to go to the school and today yeah now in the last one month or next few months they won't be going but whenever they have to get up and go to the school it's a very arduous task to get them do brushing for 2 minutes it's a hell lot of a time and imagine you show this app which is downloadable on the mobile when the kid brushes anything less than 2 minutes the emoji turns frowning there is a screeching noise and the kid gets a bit petrified and then she realizes look she has to brush again more than 2 minutes it shows a different timer contours where the brush has gone different kind of let's say infographics more than 2 minutes when the kid brushes there is a happy jingle smiling emoji we all know that today our life is governed by emoticons and emojis kid is happy she goes to the school the fact is over there this brush is being used more by the adults 2 minutes is a big big brushing time now this ice cream manufacturer did everything to increase the sale of its ice cream brand of ice cream discounts multiple coupon promotions in store kind of novel displays nothing happened assortment changes until someone suggested him to kind of do this i'm sure you can relate this kind of a jingle i mean and this jingle is more uh, tuned to the us kind of a thing but in our own uh, school days we have heard this jingle when an ice cream wala used to come and play this kind of a jingle we used to be drawn towards that just this jingle play helped increase the sale of this ice cream in one quarter by 30% where algorithms cannot work where a lot of technologies cannot work human behavior understanding behavioral science nudge theory starts creeping and that's where the adoption starts happening now the fact over there they this example is something i usually dread to give because god forbid if someone who's already been into this kind of an experience or uh, who uh, some point of time may be into this experience and god forbid if it happens the it's a very very agonizing experience claustrophobic kids fear this entire thing the whole setup the whole machine is dreadful 80% is the sedation rate amongst the kids until someone really thought smart and did this particular thing just a sheer change of the design the front facade of the machine and now kids were happy and i'm sure even some of us would like to try this machine actually 10% is the sedation rate among kids now just a pure kind of a change of design so somewhere there is a relevance about creating a differentiation and strategic advantage of ai but there is also a relevance of blending ai with ai data engineering and kind of artificial what i say design or other behavioral science let's see the next example
Sorry, it's playing again. So for some of you may have missed uh, catching up the whole uh, sequence of this video, uh, jaywalking, uh, crossing the roads when you're not supposed to is a big challenge in every country. This video feed was uh, from Paris uh, and jaywalking results into fatality. We know that in India, everyone wants to cross the road when they're not supposed to. So the government did a smart thing in uh, Paris. Uh, what they did was to deploy these cameras, which everyone has that today, but the cameras are today kind of placed at a point where if someone is jaywalking, they click the pictures, but at the same time, there is a screeching noise of a vehicle hitting you. And that moment of picture where it's like a kind of a, let's say, a thing of how do you experience death comes live in terms of expression. It's get displayed on the next billboard. You see that picture, I'm sure you will not do jaywalking next time. So this is where the power of AI and behavioral science is coming together to really create what I say, good vantage positions for the humanity. Now, two examples very quickly I want to take because then straight away we want to jump into the Q&A. Uh, how AI will be relevant in India perspective from while there are multiple interventions what the government is doing uh, from an AI perspective, but this is something which is still getting a resonance, but top of the mind, I think it should be addressed, the challenge of our judicial system. We have close to about 33 million cases in India. Today, in our legal system, there are 33 million cases. 84% of these 33 million cases have an average tenure of more than 12 years. We know that today filing a case is easy, but getting a result or a verdict is the most difficult task. 84% have an average tenure of 12 plus years. 72% of the time a lawyer spend is about understanding or kind of finding out 511 kind of legal sections of India in terms of our legal penal code and all what is there. That job if can be done by AI in terms of text mining, NLP engine, the time saved of the lawyer can be spent in terms of judiciously kind of expediting the cases. So if that can actually happen in terms of AI coming to the forefront to solve large complex judicial problem, that will be, I would say, huge. And this is something which is happening as we talk about Swatch Bharat campaign. Many of you would say, hey, Swatch Bharat campaign in AI, what's the correlation? Now, as you know, many of us are paying a CES, Swatch Bharat CES goes through our salaries and all and government is creating a lot of these uh, sanitation restrooms across the remotest districts of India and uh, every restroom uh, needs to be well maintained and if you have a challenge when you use this restroom let's say in a remotest part of northeast India and you're not happy let's say with the tile because it's not hygienic or it's broken you click that picture of that tile every restroom under Swatch Bharat campaign as you step out has a whatsapp number you just send that picture through that WhatsApp without naming anything or kind of telling where exactly this picture was shot. The picture goes to a command, command center, which is located in the remotest part of Rajasthan over there. And through the labeling and annotating of the images, they are able to identify in 15 seconds where this image came from. In another 30 seconds, the call goes to that vendor who had actually built this particular restroom. In one minute, the whole transaction is done asking him to fix the restroom. That's how artificial intelligence in terms of labeling and annotating the data is being used to create 
mass awareness about Swachh Bharat campaign in terms of usage and all. So just winding up in terms of the crucial points, as I said, look, AI, there is a lot of that flavor what has been talked about for by everyone, but to me, it's a blend of three dimensions. One, AI, of course, which I gave a lot of examples. Second, data engineering, which is about how do you build more robust data pipes? Case in point is, many of you who use Instagram, when Jennifer Aniston, the lead uh, actress uh, from uh, the Friends series, joined Instagram, and she was late in joining Instagram a few months back, she, in 15 minutes, got 7.5 million requests. Instagram crashed. Next day, New York Times reported the algorithms of Instagrams aren't robust. Well, it's not about algorithms, it's about data pipes because strong data pipes actually build self enabled, self intuitive algorithms. And the last piece, which is important, is behavioral science. I gave a lot of examples, and that's how organizations are actually getting benefited out of this. What I want to end up is kind of showing you a video of how the future of work may emerge in the time of social distancing, what we're talking about. Have a look at this video, please. The Brussels Motor Show, the biggest car event in Belgium, where all car brands show off their newest technologies. But it was Volvo who hijacked all the attention with the first car that could recruit its own technicians. Volvo presents the recruiting car. Two hundred job openings were announced on social media, inviting everyone to come and check out the first car that recruits its own engineers. To conduct the interviews, we tapped into the car's technology. Welcome, Oliver. Glad to see you put on your blue shirt for the interview. Can you show me where my electric compressor is? Sure, sure. Please allow me to play some piano music to make you feel more comfortable. Tell me, why should I hire you? Um, I've been passionate about home. By applying AI, we could actually test social and technical skills and make unbiased evaluations of all applicants. These were sent to Volvo's HR managers for further interviews. Changing the conversation from cars to jobs got us national media attention. Seventy percent of all news coverage about the Brussels Motor Show was dedicated to Volvo. More than one in two Belgians was reached through PR coverage alone, leading to three hundred percent more price requests. And the two hundred vacancies, well. They were all filled. So I think I'm, by now you would have gauged out that's how the future of work will look like and AI will be at the forefront. So I take a pause and Madhav over to you for Q&A. Hi Samir, Sneanshu here. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> what a captivating session it was. Uh, love the use, the, the mix of the content use of the AV, right? Everything was spot on. I had commented on, on LinkedIn that I expected this to be a cracker of a session. It certainly was. So thanks for doing this summit and we hope to have you back very soon for another session. Pleasure. Um, with, with that being said, I'm seeing a couple of uh, questions being asked. Uh, very, very topical again. Uh, the first question comes in from Santosh. Santosh is asking, how can a business start adding AI to their strategy and very mindful of the time that is available. I think five minutes is all that we have more or less. Um, and I'll probably prioritize top three questions, right. That have been asked of us. Yeah. So your views on how a business, how can a business start adding artificial intelligence to their strategy? So uh, just to keep it brief, Sneanshu, uh, with the paucity of time and I, I wish I should have managed the time well, but here is the thing. Uh, AI strategy is, a continuum. It's a process. It's a journey. It cannot be at a stage where we are talking about you just implement some of the algorithms and the magic happens. No. One organization needs to understand the maturity at which they are in terms of analytics to AI. Second, 
it's inversely related in terms of what I say that what's the platform you have, whether it's your platform yep. customers or kind of what you sell, platform should be able to generate those data points, which actually feeds the best of the data pipes, the best of the data pipes creates the best enabled machine enabled algorithms and algorithms inversely decides your strategy, which means algorithms are the mainstay in terms of taking care of how your customer movements, how your customer data points and how the feedback loop is being enabled. Once that's there, the strategies can be defined in terms of what new products, services you need to be launching and how innovative you need to be there in terms of your organization. Wonderful, wonderful. The second question very quickly is, can AI work independently or machine learning alongside is a must? We probably know the answer to that, but uh, uh, would you would like to quickly comment on that one? Well, again, uh, these are, you know, Snehanshu, you also being, you've been into this field for 17, 18 years. I think we we have a knack of playing with this, algo I mean, I would say coroniums, machine learning, data science, AI, deep learning. Well, I think the fact over there is, uh, true, everyone is fine in their own respect, but it's what I say, it's a maturity of where you are today. I mean, machine learning is a part of, artificial intelligence. Deep learning is a part of the machine learning. It's a kind of, let's say, technique. So over there, machine learning cannot be reached or cannot be applied unless you have what I say, the level one of your algorithms design. Are your algorithms really productive, accurate? If there is an efficacy, can you improve upon? And once you have a right infrastructure of data, the right data pipes, then you are in a position to run machine learning enabled algorithms to get more intelligence and insights. Otherwise, then the holy grail of analytics is still okay. And somewhere I keep on saying that analytics is not bad. It's just because when AI came in, analytics was never left behind. Today, there are many organizations who are still at the analytics journey, which is fine because they want to create that foundation first and then move to the aspect of AI. So at any stage, it's about maturity of the organization and what kind of insights and decision-making they want to establish through analytics or AI. Wonderful. So I've a couple of uh, questions coming in in the post-COVID scenario. I think that the question that is being asked uh, is on two, uh, is twofold. One is the impact of AI after COVID-19 and the second one is a little more pointed in that uh, the, the person wants to understand how will AI hold its ground in the next two, three years and justify investments post-COVID-19 world? Right. I believe very, very, uh, you know, contextual again, given what we are seeing right now, AI is touted to be investment heavy. Will it justify the investments in a post COVID world? That is the question. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a very relevant question, but uh, as I started my narrative, I said, look, earlier pre COVID, if we call it, uh, now today we are calling before Corona and after Corona, uh, pre COVID, this, things was that AI was being leveraged more for innovation, transformation, and disruption. Post-COVID, AI will be more used for revival, survival, and resurrection. Because there is already established data points the organization have to understand what insights and decision-making they need to do through AI. Rather, the fact over there, if we take into instance, I mean, if we take into this example, a lot of FMCG companies have figured out that there could be a new way of doing supply chains or creating new supply chains post COVID. Now, without using analytics AI, they will not be able to do that. FMCG companies, again, same examples, yeah. knew that what kind of, let's say, product were not sold, but COVID scenario created some new categories of products which may sustain. Face mask will become a reality kind of a thing disinfectant. I mean, these kind of, let's say, aspect of carrying disinfectants or kind of, let's say, moisturizers will, I mean, be a norm. So that will compel nothing but AI analytics to be used more comprehensively. Of course, as I keep on saying, the level of how we kind of used to denote in terms of the ROI versus now, it will change. The POCs may go for a change and the expectation by the service providers will be can you enable it much more on a fast basis? Lovely. Thank you so much for that answer, uh, Samir. And, and uh, to the audience, uh, that's all the time that we have today. 
but I, I sincerely hope that the masterclass session was top notch. Just to let you know that we carefully curate the speak, speaker and topic combination and we strive to bring you only the very best. Also, it's our commitment to you that always masterclass series will be free, right? Will not levy any sort of registration charges. We also have the next couple of sessions lined up and we expect to put them out on social media. So do follow us. Once again, on behalf of, of everybody, Samir, thanks you. Thanks so much for the time that you invested today. It was totally worth it, right? There are some more questions that are coming through. I'm so sorry, you haven't had the time to pick them up. But what we'll do is, we'll try and give you, leave you with our email addresses, right? And we can have them collated and sent over to Samir for his, for his reference and response, right? Lovely. So thanks everybody for your time and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thanks, nice Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Samir.